During the Steam Winter Sale, I picked up the Fife Circle line for Train Simulator Classic. It depicts, yes, the Fife Circle line as it was between 2015 and 2020. The pack includes your ScotRail Class 158s and your Mark II coaches, but it also includes this. Now I always write these videos as if I was presenting to someone who has never seen a train before, but I'm going to assume that if the title of this video was enough for you to click on it, you probably know what this is. But because train enthusiasts tend to like it when information is repeated at them, this is an A4 class. They were the flagship express locomotives of the London and North Eastern Railway. Not that London and North Eastern Railway, this London and North Eastern Railway. This Pacific streak, as the A4 Pacifics were known, is very appropriate for a route set in Scotland. By the way, try saying this Pacific streak four times really fast. Not only was number 6009 very active on the mainline during this time period, she was also one of the A4s which ended her working life in Scotland, specifically the Glasgow Aberdeen Expresses. That particular route is one riddled with inclines and sharp curves, and the lack of suitable diesel trains to work the route meant there was a gap in the roster in the early 1960s when many steam locomotives had already been withdrawn. A4s were the perfect engines to fill this gap, was the opinion of the Scottish region manager, James Ness. In 1962, a test run with number 60027 Merlin proved his hypothesis. And so, five A4s were allocated to Aberdeen's Ferry Hill Shed for the Glasgow Expresses. After King's Cross Shed in London closed to steam in 1963, these were joined by nine more. The first A4s to arrive were number 6. 0004 William Whitelaw and 60011 Empire of India. Generally, the Glasgow Aberdeen trains were known under three names. The St Mungo and Granite City were the trains departing from Aberdeen arriving at Glasgow Buchanan Street station. The Bon Accord was the Buchanan Street to Aberdeen equivalent. These expresses were timed for just three hours, a gruelling task for any steam engine. But the A4s proved so successful that they became the regular engines for this 153 mile stretch, for more traffic than just the St Mungo, Granite City and Bonacourt trains. That being said, they were not the first choice. The route is mostly ex-Caledonian railway tracks. The CR was taken over by the London, Midland and Scottish Railway, so initially their big Pacifics were the ones to hold the St Mungo, etc. But Aberdeen Ferry Hill was an ex-North British depot, later to become an ex-LNER depot, and the ex-LMS locomotives were basically a foreign design. So the A4 it was. This sparked another point of contention in the fierce rivalry between ex-Caledonian men and ex-North British men, the North British being the long-time rival of the Caledonian. Now when I say ex-CR and ex-NB men, that is technically not true. The workforce served routes formerly operated by those two companies, yes, but in the 1960s you'd be hard-pressed trying to find anyone who had worked for either the CR or the NB still on duty. However, old rivalries and all that meant that there often was animosity between the people who had worked for the North British or Caledonian successors. The book which served as inspiration for this video, The Call of Steam by Robert Attlee, has many a quote from ex-London North Eastern Railway men, by then much like the LMS, a part of British Railways. Jack Ralph, an ex-LNER fireman and relief driver, sums up the attitude best. The Cali man thinks their engines are best. The North British man just tells you the truth. He goes on to tell about his experience with the A4s on the Glasgow Aberdeen Road. The A1s and A2s were bad firemen's locos. He had twice as much shoveling as on an A4. They were lovely, smooth locos. That being said, the A4s were not all things to all people. The same book, The Call of Steam, also records the opinion of Gordon Tullock, who worked from Ferry Hill for 45 years. He describes driving the A4s as nothing special, remarking how their driving wheels were too big for the many inclines on the Aberdeen-Glasgow route. He deemed the smaller LNER V2s to be the better option for the line. On that particular point, he might have been right. Out of Aberdeen, there is a gradual but constant climb which lasts for seven miles. The coastal winds make the conditions worse, and the large driving wheels of the A4 sometimes had trouble with adhesion. To solve the problem, heavier trains were often double-headed by A4s and a class 5 locomotive, 
A4s were rated as Class 8. Despite the A4s putting in sterling service, they really were rostered for the St. Mungo for a short while. The full allocations of 14 A4s was on Aberdeen Ferry Hill Shed's books in 1964, but by 1965 only 9 remained, the other 5 having been withdrawn. By 1966 there had been such reduction in the A4s diagram on the St. Mungo that only 3 services a day to be streak hauled remained. British Rail eventually set the date for the final A4 work train on September the 6th, 1966. This caused somewhat of a scramble for enthusiasts who wanted to ride behind the fastest steam locomotives in the world for one last time. When the final day came, only two A4s remained, 6019 Pittern and 6024 Kingfisher, 6019 having already been officially withdrawn by then. Somewhat ironically, it was the locomotive which had already been withdrawn which provided traction for the final A4 rostered Glasgow Aberdeen Express. 6024 remained at work for a few weeks longer, also after having already been off the books officially. It was noted to have stepped in for a diesel on the Glasgow to Aberdeen Express on at least the 8th as well as on the 14th of September, though that day proved to be the final working day for an A4 under BR. The Scotch streaks only lasted for, at most, four years, but those short years proved to have an immense influence on how people view the overall history of the streaks. When the A4s were designed, their goal was to match what diesel could do, and by the end of their lives they were still doing just that. They might not have been strictly necessary in the grand scheme of things, what with diesel and electric already being capable of the A4s performance, but you'll find it a hard time convincing some that the streaks were not the greatest express machines ever built.